Hi, and welcome to The Groomer Next Door. This is episode 20. We come to you live from the Rolla Animal Shelter. I'm Chris Green. Sitting next to me is Sarah. Hello. And this one, we're going to be rejoined by our good friend, John Redshaw of the Rolla Animal Shelter. Say hi. How are you doing today? It's good to be back. Glad to see you guys. Well, we're glad to be here. Um, this is, you know, a great opportunity to come in here and talk about the spring and summer issues with all kinds of dogs. You're going to give us um, all of the education you possibly can. And we're also going to be celebrating, um, oh gosh, uh, Animal Control. National Animal Control Appreciation Week. Thank you. Mouthful Definitely right a mouthful. Go. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Um, so before we even get started, I'm going to give you, um, I want to reach out to you and everybody who does what you guys do. Uh, had a, I actually wrote a few things down just so that I can uh, pay tribute to you guys. Um, this is the National Animal Control Association's Officer Appreciation Week. The goal is to promote and re uh, recognize members who have made a positive contribution to the communities and towns that they serve. Here, here's to all of you who dedicate your life to animals and to animal safety. This week of appreciation will finally give some recognition towards the hardworking men and women of animal control that risk their lives and spend huge amounts of personal resources, including time uh, for away from their family and friends while serving the public, like all other public safety and law enforcement agencies involved and empowered with same duties. This will be a week that these hardworking and ed dedicated animal control officers can finally be honored in a way by having a whole community say, Thank you for helping us, and thank you for helping us with all of the animals that are in need. Um, let's, you know, just everybody who is out there who's listening to this, you know, these men and women, they do dedicate a great deal of time and resources for animals that are in need, and we do appreciate everything. So thank you. Very well said and very, very much appreciated. We greatly appreciate that. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, join up and tell us. What we need to know. <laughs> Spring and summer. Here it is. Finally. I thought it'd never get here. I don't think it actually has yet. It was a long, hard, tough winter, but we all fared well. We all made it through, and now we are ready to get to business. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I wrote up a few things here. Um, you know, before when we talk about the Rolla Animal Shelter, we basically talked about the shelter. Mm -hmm. This shelter has come a long, long ways from where it was years ago. And I have two other officers here that cannot be left out of the picture. We all work together as a very close team, kind of a family-oriented type thing. One person can't do it. Uh, we all three get together and we work as a team, and the three of us have made the shelter what it is today. And one of those officers is Officer Roy Taylor. He's been here for about six years now. Um, he's a great guy. He loves animals, loves his job looks forward to come to work every day doing what he does. Uh, the second officer is Officer Kathleen McMean. She's been here for a total of about four years now. Wonderful, wonderful, great person, huge, huge heart. Uh, she, just like all of us, love the animals and this, this is what we do. We do it, we're, we're the voice for the animals. We have to speak for the animals and we enjoy doing what we do. So together, all of us are a team and we're the ones that operate this shelter and make it what it is today. So, with that being said, uh, the warmer weather has finally got here, which means simply we have an increase, or going to have an increase in our calls and the numbers of animals and the types of animals that we are going to see on a daily basis. Um, during this time of the year, we see a lot of different kind of things, and I'll kind of briefly go through that. Um, I think the most important thing is when the weather starts warming up, we get a lot of calls for animals locked in vehicles. Yes. That is a very, very important thing. That is a, a very serious call that we can go on. Now, I have to ask that question, um, and we were, we were talking about this. We, we were yeah. discussing this this yeah. morning. Um, if you're out, let's just say, for example, you're at Walmart, and it's warm outside. You see a dog in a car, and there's no windows cracked. Who do you call? The, if it's between the hours, our operating hours from 8 to 5, Monday through Saturday, you call the City of Rolla Animal Control. Okay, so uh, for all people who are out of the area, just call your local sure. animal control. Sure, call the local animal shelter, animal control. If you can't get a hold of us some, for some reason, maybe we're out on another call or else the phone's busy, uh, the Rolla Police Department. 
we'll send an officer out there or, or whatever community that you're in. If you can't get a hold of your local animal control, call your city police department or sheriff's department. They'll help you out. Okay. They do a very good job at that. Okay. But we see a lot of those calls come this time of year. When that weather hits about 75, 80 degrees, the calls just come pouring in. Uh, we get a lot of calls from businesses, uh, uh, Walmart, uh, Kmart, Big Lots, uh, but, you know, different places of animals being locked in the cars. Now, we'll resp we will respond to each and every one of these calls. We have to, of course. It's a, it's a major deal. A lot of times we'll get there, and believe it or not, the car will be running. The windows might be rolled up, but the car will be running, and the air conditioner will be on, and the dog's just kind of like hanging out in the back seat there, listening to the radio and enjoying life. Other times we get there, um, the windows are rolled up, or the windows are cracked a little bit. And people have a misconception about, you know, if I roll the windows down a little bit, it's gonna cause, it's gonna create enough airflow through there, and my dog's gonna be safe. And that can't be anything further from the truth. You figure if it's 80 degrees outside, it's 20 to 30 degrees hotter inside the car. In uh, like a 90 degree day, in less than 15, 20 minutes, that car, the inside of that car, the interior can get up to 120 to 140 degrees. Wow. Um, if the animal, um, they can, they can, it won't take any time at all for them to start suffering heat type related injuries, heat exhaustion, uh, heat stroke, and of course animals will die in vehicles. We hear it on the news all the time in summer months, animals are dying in vehicles. We'll respond. Um, people often ask us, well, what can happen? Can you write us a ticket? In the side of the city of Rolla, if we respond to an animal in, locked in a car, um, we, can have, we have the opportunity or the option of writing you a ticket or not writing you a ticket based on the situation. If you just pulled your car up and uh, the dog hasn't been in there that long and everything's good to go, we might give you a warning. But if you've been in there for a while and your dog is panting, that's one of the signs, heavy panting, uh, lethargic. Uh, the dog might jump up in the seat and, and jump back down on the floor. He might be laying there. He, he might be unresponsive or, you know, several different indications that the animal is suffering heat-related injuries. Um, if it comes to that, we can actually write you a ticket. Now, when we write you a ticket, uh, we categorize that as animal cruelty in the city of Rolla. Animal cruelty is punishable by a $250 fine and a mandatory court appearance, which means you're going to pay the fine. You're also going to go up here before the judge and explain why you left your dog in the car. Um, the judge will, I can't speak for the judge, but the judge will probably access that fine, maybe even a higher fine. And I understand in some cities they can actually have jail time for wow. that, depending on the severity of the dog. Uh, we do have the options, animal control officers, too. If we come across a dog locked in a vehicle, we can actually break that window and remove that animal from the vehicle. Uh, we have to immediately take it to the vet and have it examined, of course, have a vet report. And at that time, definitely you're going to get a citation. So, you know, the best thing, the best advice that we can give is when you come to town, don't leave your dogs in the vehicle. Uh, it's, it's just not good. It can turn out very, very bad. Just, you know, remember that. And that's definitely good information because, I mean, we've seen it a number of times. I mean, I think the worst thing is during the, the dead of summer and it's just sweltering. And just oh, the yeah, smallest sure. crack that's there, you're just like, I, I couldn't breathe in that. How is the dog yeah. going to? Well, even if it was like, you know, 60, 70 degrees in there, I don't think dogs really want to be hanging out in 100 degree weather. That's no airflow. No, they don't. And actually, you know, dogs don't sweat. They have no sweat gland, so they, that's why they pant, is to recirculate that air. And all you're doing is breathing in and exhaling hot air. Mm. So it doesn't do any good. You so know, it's not oxygen at some point. Right. And, and can you imagine wearing a, a coat during sure, the summer, sure. summer months, and you're just wearing this heavy coat? and oh. It's terrible. It's very terrible. But just, you know, don't leave your dogs in the car. The second most, uh, uh, the call that we get is animal bites. We see a lot of animal bites during the summer. A lot of dogs, a lot of cats. Um, during the summer months, um, you might be at the playground, you might be on a walking trail, or, you know, friends might come over for barbecues, and, and dogs, you know, at some point in time, they're going to bite you. Um, people will find stray dogs outside, they'll pick up dogs, they'll end up getting bit. A dog bite can be a minor, a dog bite can be very, very serious. 
in addition to the dog bites, um, there's a little more that goes along with that. When animal control responds to any dog bite uh, or any cat bite, cats just as well as dogs in the city of Rolla are supposed to have a rabies vaccination tag. Uh, most of the time they don't. Um, if you get bit by a dog, we're, first thing we're going to ask you is do you have a current rabies vaccination tag? Um, if you do not have a current rabies vaccination tag on your animal through the vet, we can probably go ahead and seize your animal at that time and put it into quarantine, which means we can bring it back to the shelter here. The dog has to be held for 10 days, but before we do that, it has to go to the vet. It has to go to the vet, it has to be examined, which is going to cost the dog owner, the animal owner. It's going to either come back to the shelter, which we're going to charge you $10 a day for 10 days. That's $100 just right off the bat there. Or quarantine at the vet. Some vets will, car will charge you $12 a day, $15 a day, doesn't matter. Whatever they charge you, you're going to have to pay. At the end of that quarantine period, you're going to have to have another follow-up or conclusive examination to make sure your dog or your cat is okay. At that time, they'll go ahead and give them a rabies vaccination tag. So there's a lot of problems with that associated with not having a rabies vaccination tag. Same scenario, we go out to a dog bite and your animal does have a current rabies vaccination tag. You're still going to have to take it to the vet per law, but then the animal can come home with you and be at basically quarantined at your house for 10 days, which is going to save you a whole bunch of money. Then at the end of 10 days, he's got to go back and get a rabies examination. So you're looking at probably three, dollars $400 or more if your dog's not vaccinated versus, you know, $60, $70, $80 maybe if your dog is vaccinated. Uh, sometimes we'll get animal bites where there is no owners of animals, cats or dogs. And then, of course, we have to take other methods of, of making sure that you're, you're safe. Uh, so the best thing to do that I can that I can advise is to make sure your dog has rabies tags. In addition to that, if your dog ever gets lost uh, and he comes into the shelter, when you have rabies tags, we can automatically call the number on the tag and get your animal back to you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. This also goes back to one of our other episodes where we say properly tag your pet. Yes. Keep a collar on them at all times. Um, keep the rabies tag leg. Officer Redshaw said, keep the stuff on them. Um, you can call the veterinarian to make sure he's up to date on rabies so that if the shelter gets a hold of them, at least they know they're current on their shots. And then eventually get them back home. So this all ties together about making sure that your pet is collared with the tags. Right. And, uh, you know, that's where we're at in the 20 now episodes. We actually have covered so many different things. It so all ties in together. it all does tie in together. It's almost like a giant book. Sure. I didn't want to interrupt yeah. you. I just listened. No, no, that's fine. And that's a good point. That's a very good point. We do get some dogs in here, not as many as we'd like to see with rabies tags or some sort of identification, but we do get a significant number in here. And the problem that we see quite frequently is we'll run the tag, we'll call the phone number to try to get the animal back to them, and the number's been disconnected or no longer in service. So, you know, it's impossible for us to get that animal back to you. Mm -hmm. um, we, whenever we bring in an animal in the shelter here, we're required to keep it for five days. Which means, you know, during that five days, we do a lot of things. We evaluate the dog, disposition, uh, we make sure the dog is okay, and we kind of safe keep it, for lack of better words, until the owner can come in and claim it, or, it, or, uh, or the five days comes up. Now, the five days, after five days, and the owner does not claim that animal, whether it be a cat or a dog, it automatically reverts to being the property of the city of Rolla at which time we can uh, we can adopt that animal. Uh, if the person comes in eight, nine days later and says, hey, I lost my dog, you know, I'm sorry, unfortunately your dog has gone to another, another home because we couldn't get a hold of you. So I guess what I'm trying to say to sum it all up, when you have tags, make sure they're current, just like Sarah said. Make sure they're current, make sure your phone number is current. If you get a new phone or you move, make sure you call the vet and update your information. And it's the same way as uh, microchips, too. We have scanners. Whenever animals come in here, we scan them for microchips. 
a lot of times the problem, just like rabies tags that we're seeing, is the chip does not check back to a valid number. Hmm. Or it might check back to a number and the person goes, well, you know, I gave that dog away three years ago. So then again, we don't know who the animal goes to. So make sure all of your information is always current. And we, we mentioned microchips as well on that same episode of proper tagging your pet because we've seen it numerous times. Um, it actually came up. We found a, a dog roaming the streets. Actually, we found it a couple times now. Um, they're just roaming, no tags, no nothing. Right, right. And you're just going, you got to put a tag on this dog. Right. And what we've done um, when we see it out on you know Cedar Grove Road and, and Lane, we saw quite a few dogs loose. If they come to us, we'll take them to um, our workplace, try to call them or whatnot, and then we end up taking them home since you can't have uh, pets without proper uh, rabies at the sh- at the, the we can't resort. Have it at, yeah, we can't have it in the room. So we bring them home to our place and keep them, hang them out with our place, um, put on raw and net, mm-hmm. um, call your local animal shelter, see if anybody's looking for them. Um, but... It's some of the easiest ways to help find the owners. You never know. Right, and, right. and and that's something that um, was discussed last week with P Call. Is it, it happens quite often where dogs are just roaming around, nobody knows who they belong to, and you're just trying to find the rightful home. So it's just proper channels. Sure. And that's that's the hard part. Follow the channels. Exactly. And and you know the majority of dogs and cats that we get in here in the shelter do not have tags. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because you know good and well that those animals belong to somebody, but who do you call? Where is the owner? You have no way, no means of getting these animals back to their rightful owner. And it's hard to find them on Facebook, too. Sometimes you might be lucky to see somebody post that they they're misplaced a dog and it's shared between, like, five different people. Oh, I know that dog. That's the dog. Right, but right. how often does that mm-hmm. happen? So I do have a question here. Um, for those who go ahead and... Um, they end up finding a dog, um, kind of like what we did, but they end up finding a dog with no collar, no way of identifying the dog. It's just a typical Chihuahua or a typical, you know, Maltese. They all look the same, kind sure, of. Sure, sure, yeah. uh, What can that person go, or what can they do to either find the owner? What's in their law, or what are the rights do they have in the city of Rolla when they find a, ta- a pet that's not tagged? Um, how long, what do they have to do to it's actually theirs where they can call it ownership? That's a good question. A um, question, but I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. In the state of Missouri, um, and I've got it out there in the other office there, the law says that if you find an animal and you take care of that animal and you feed that animal and that animal is in the same place for three or more consecutive days, uh, basically, you are considered the owner of that animal. Okay, uh, you can try now to you can put it on Facebook. You can put it. Uh, you can make take a picture and put it on uh, posters and post them around town. Uh, you can call the radio stations and and put on it that you found a dog. But the law says that if you've had it for three or more day consecutive days in the same place and you're caring for that animal you're considered the rightful owner now a lot of people uh don't know that and they go you know we'll give this dog back to the rightful owner wherever they are whoever they may be they'll give them back and other people will go no i've had it for three days missouri said it's my property now and so we're going to go ahead and keep it basically we are under that those same guidelines, but we add a couple more days to that. We are we have five days. Uh, that's the city ordinance. We have to keep them for five days, and but we do everything we can to find the owner. Uh, we'll post it on our Facebook page. Uh, we'll post it on Pet Finder. But always remember, after five days, that animal becomes the legal property of the city of Rolla, and then we can adopt it out. Now, another point that I want to cover: if an animal comes to us and it has a tag, but we can't get a hold of the owner, or we know who the owner is, or somebody comes in and says, hey, I I know where that dog lives, that belongs to my neighbor. Well, this changes a little bit, because now there is an owner, and we know that there is an owner, so we have to keep it for 10 days versus the five days, and after 10 days, then we're, we're, uh, we're eligible to put it up for adoption. See, it's kind of a, a, 
complex system that we operate under. Yeah. You know, we want all these animals to go home, but we have to follow certain guidelines before we can do that. Uh, the rabies vaccination tags, we were just talking about the tags here. Uh, April 2012, the City of Rolla Animal Shelter come under new guidelines. Um, any animal that's in our facility that is legally the property of the City of Rolla and is four months or older, the City of Rolla has to vaccinate that animal with the rabies vaccination before we can offer it up for adoption. Uh, once it's held for five days, technically it's available but then per guidelines it's not available because it's not yet vaccinated. And we don't do that ourselves because in the state of Missouri, a licensed vet has to vaccinate or can't, is the only one that can vaccinate for rabies. What's funny is out in California, um, like I said, we've, I've only lived in three states, California, Oregon, and here. That's one state longer but, than more than me. <laughs> but in California, you you can't even adopt a pet until it's neutered. The actual shelter has to have a veterinarian come in and fix every pet before they're even eligible to be put up really? for adoption. Yeah, so all you guys are, or not all, you guys do so much, but you guys come in and have to take the pet to the vet to get the rabies vaccinations. It could be a lot worse. And then the mm -hmm. adoption fee in California goes up another $100 because they the potential owners sure. have yeah. to pay for it. And if your dog gets loose in California and it's picked up by this pound, they are forced to go and get that dog fixed. You could have a pedigree dog, mm -hmm. and they are forced to get it fixed, and that is state law. So for all those who live in other parts of the country, other parts of the United States, please check into your shelter's laws, to the laws per the state, um, to make sure you are up to date with the knowledge of being a pet opener. And always check your, your ordinance in your town. I mean, I, I start studying the ordinance here mm -hmm. just to see different things on feral cats and um, loose animals. And there's not a great deal, but, you know, ordinances change. What's nice is that you still have guidelines, so when yeah. people have upset or, or want to complain, you're like, I have laws backing me, which is amazing. Right. Well, exactly. actually, I'm, I'm going to jump in on that. I know Kim with PCOL would ask, would probably is asking this question. What, if anything, do we have on feral cats on some kind of system to kind of um, catch and release? Is there anything in the works? As far as from the shelter here, there's not. But there's a lot of groups out there that have what's called a TNR program, yes. trap, neuter, and release. Yes. You trap it, you get it fixed, you release it back into the community. The shelter doesn't offer that or doesn't do anything with that type of program that, that a lot of groups do. There's feral cat colonies all over Rolla. Yes. Uh, we know where several of them are. People will go in there and, and most of these cats have been trapped out and fixed and put back into this colony. Mm -hmm. It's just a feral cat colony mm -hmm. and that's what they do. They, they survive on their own. People come in and feed them and take care of for them. As far as being adoptable, those well, don't fall into the category as being adoptable animals. Not really so the adopting, not not really the adopting, but is there anything in the works to kind of work on that TNR uh, with the city? Are they going to do anything in the upcoming future? Because there, there has been a few different things. Indianapolis, um, mm -hmm. there's a new law up there that says uh, if you actually feed an animal, you have to TNR. Right, right, um, right. And there's other places. Um, I know Houston, Texas has a van that does all this. Um but there's a lot of out of cost. Uh, we, you know how P call is. Right. They're they're out of cost trying to do a lot of this, you know, yeah. neuter, spay and neuter, and then of course bring back instead of a lot of people want to see these cats taken and obviously killed. Right. You know, we want to try to stop that. You guys do as well. But I was wondering, is there anything in the works, or is that something that's just not as far as you know? Of. Yeah. As far as I know, there's not. Okay. It's just the groups that are taking care of that. I do not believe that the shelter is going to get involved in this. I mean, do I agree with it? No. I think it should be. Every animal should be taken care of. I don't care whether it's, it's nice or mean. It should be yeah. taken care of. It's an animal. They can't help themselves. They need people to help them. I wish we had some type of program, but due to budget constraints, I don't ever foresee that. And that, that was a discussion that we had. Uh, we had a discussion her and I privately about it and we're like you know how do we actually work something like that out that has been a discussion just how how can that work into Rolla because there's just a great deal Rolla St. James mm -hmm. obviously you guys can't deal with Tri-County and right. what they're doing but 
There's got to be something. So I was wondering if you knew of anything. We don't know of anything, no. I, like I said, I wish we did, but we sure don't because of budget constraints and stuff like that. But I said, there's, you know, I commend the groups out there that are doing this for these cats. And going back to what was Sarah was saying and you about uh, different guidelines for the shelters, there's different guidelines everywhere. Uh, we're different than St. James. St. James is different than you know, another county, another community somewhere. Everybody has their own laws, their own ordinances, their own guidelines. And that's a good point. We've had, we've had a lot of people come into the shelter, and our adoption rate was raised from $20 to $35 back in April 2012. And uh, the reason why we did that is because we now have to vaccinate our animals. So that costs the city. So we have to recoup some of that money. So our adoption rate, of course, raised from twenty to thirty-five dollars, and, and there's that's, a that is just not unreasonable. No, it's thirty-five not. is not, especially you're going to try to help get this pup, pups, or even a, even a cat. cats. All these guys try to get them adopted out, and you guys will keep them for as long as it takes on right. some. That is a lot of food to go through. That's a lot of medical concerns exactly. to keep up on. That's a lot of cat litter. A lot of care. That the, is the care a itself. lot. Yeah. And just for $35. So people, please, do not argue with $35. <laughs> it is typical. It is nothing. I mean, seriously, I can give you $35 on my, my next paycheck. Seriously. Well, well, it's we're not, not, a big we're not saying that we're going to give you $35. <laughs> no, because we're going to have saying. everybody Everybody out there is going to be like, Hi, Sarah, I'm here to get $35. <laughs> and then we're going to have 100 people. So uh, it's not an, an offer just, valid. Just <laughs> seriously, $35 is nothing compared to all the time it takes. Plus, you know, your own salaries that you guys take in. There is a lot that comes into factor. So thirty-five dollars is nothing. Like I said, out in California, is like two hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. Really high. It yeah. is really high. You know, and years ago, uh, the other supervisor they they compiled a, a study, and back then it runs approximately seventy-five to eighty-five dollars a day per animal yeah. per day to take care. I mean, you got to clean, you got to feed, you interact, you care. Uh, provide medical, we, we can't provide medical diagnosis or medicine, but we have to go through our, our veterinarian, and our veterinarian can prescribe that. So, of course, that costs the city of Rolla money to get that medication. So it costs a significant amount to care for an animal per day. And, and, and $35, you're right, is nothing. And we've had a bunch of people coming in here just absolutely just, Oh my gosh! And Thirty-five dollars I mean, is going to kill you. Right. You probably should have right. done it. Right. That's dog. that's <laughs> all that you guys charge is thirty-five dollars. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Because our main function here is we, we need to make money. We need to generate revenue. But our main priority is to find homes for our animals here. Yeah, it's not that's, like you guys are trying to get rich here. You're not no, no. selling dogs. We got to find homes for all these animals. I mean, if anything, you're just bringing in just a little bit enough. Sure. Just, just to help recouping the, the little bit. The little bit, the fraction it takes. Mm -hmm. And, and, of course, you know, we, we were talking about this off air, and that was, you know, the number of utilizations. I just said that, wrong, that completely wrong. You, there you go. Um, we were talking about the numbers, and everybody's going to be mad, whether it's one or more. You know, this is how you can see Raw Animal Shelter is not trying to make a profit. No, no. You're not trying to make money. I mean, $35, it, you're going to spend that just on a doctor's visit and getting the shot itself. Right. So, really, it's... It's, it's three it's trips to Panera, you know, not, it's really, It's either, really actually it's, one trip to Panera <laughs> to have a child. And there you go. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one night out to eat, and that's that's so small. Right. But Our, our adoption rate has is great. It's just fantastic. On a monthly basis, our adoption rate will run anywhere from 80% to 100%. In 2013, 7 out of 12 months was 100% adoption rate. Um, we don't only adopt animals to citizens, okay? We we work with different groups. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether I told you last time, the last did, session, but, but definitely the uh, uh, Wounded Warriors Program. Mm -hmm. Some of our animals go to the Wounded Warriors Program. Some of our animals go and are trained as service animals, uh, maybe diabetic alert dogs, that type of thing. Um, so we do a, a great, great service here, for, and, and we're not expecting a whole bunch in return. You know, we're just trying to get all our animals homes. And, I mean, and that's, you, that's the main thing. You really thing. do. I mean, we're, we're going to do a, we, we talked about this as well off air, 
Uh, we're going to do a little walkthrough as well. We're going to record that as a sub um, episode as mini well. Episode. A little sure. mini episode and just kind of go through that as we're walking through. But, you know, you said there was like four dogs and what was it, one cat? We're very low right now. You know, we're coming out of the winter months. And actually, uh, since January 1st, we've had a considerable number of animals in here. And I wish I could find my, uh, my, my, my reports that I do. I think we're at 175 animals that we've seen since January 1st of this year. So our adoption rate right now, are, we have two different adoption rates, our monthly adoption rate and our annual average adoption rate. Right now our annual average adoption rate sits at 96%. Which is huge. So most of our animals have gone home, they've been adopted, they've been sent to rescue organizations. Yep. So. You know, and nobody likes to talk about the euthanasia. We have, unfortunately, because we've had sick animals and we've had very, very injured animals. You can't, you can, you want to do everything you can for them, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, you can't. It's life. It's just, it's the you, fact of you life. You can't save everybody, no. every, everyone. So it's, it's understandable. When people see the number like that, sixteen, everybody just lost their head about. It's not. It's not just. It seems like it's not just healthy animals being put down. It's. You know, the sickly, the ones that are... Were are hit so, by a vehicle, right. and, and there's just no way of, of Exactly, the ones recovering. that are suffering. Yeah. So that adds into the, the number two, it seems mm -hmm. like. Well, I, I actually speak to those people, you know, and, and if they are listening to this, I doubt they are. But if they are, it, the question is, would you want an animal suffering, or would you want to put them out of their, their misery? And sure. I don't see how somebody can justify an animal being in pain, constant pain, to just put it out of its misery and we've seen it numerous times in in our lives it's it's hard to see an animal put down it is it's a very difficult decision and the city of Rolla has a policy um, we as an animal shelter uh, through the city of Rolla Police Department and through the Missouri Department of Agriculture we are prohibited from knowingly now the magic word here is knowingly adopting any animal that is sick mm -hmm. or vicious or aggressive if we've got, and I don't care, a lot of people, oh my God, you got pit bulls, you know. It, it doesn't have to be a pit bull. It can be a chihuahua. It yeah. doesn't matter. A chihuahua if, can be a little Sure. <laughs> if we have an aggressive animal out there, and I know good and well that it's going to bite you, mm -hmm. or maybe it doesn't like kids, and you take it home, and I, I guarantee it's going to bite your family members, yep. and it's going to hurt them, mm -hmm. we can be held responsible for that. We can be held liable for that. Mm -hmm. It's just like a sick animal. If we know, hey, you know, this animal's sick, it's got this disease or that disease, or uh, a lot of people are familiar with the parvo virus. Right. You know, if we know the dog is sick with the parvo virus, and we kind of clean it up and we hide it a little bit, now I'm going to adopt you, this sick animal, and you take it home and you have other animals, mm -hmm. and it infects them. Well, we can... Anybody can lie and go, well, we didn't know it was sick, but it's a conscience thing, okay? We know this, and we're not going to subject anybody to being injured, hurt, or, or getting their animals sick. So what are you going to do? You have to do the unfortunate thing sometimes, you know, because, I mean, you, dogs can kill you, okay? Yes, they can. If, if you can get, I've done a lot of bite cases that are just absolutely just horrendous. You wouldn't believe it. This is caused by a dog. And if I adopt you a dog that I know good and well is going to bite you and hurt you, I can get in trouble. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, you wanted, you're just erring on the side of caution or CYA. Exactly. We have to be cautious. You know, and going back to, to this, we kind of got off track a little we bit. We always do that on we this always show. always do, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and some of the calls that we see during spring and summer is animals and cars, animal bites, and an increase in wildlife. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a major thing here. We see a, a every day just about, we see... Uh, raccoons, uh, possums, armadillos. We send out an enormous number of traps, live animal traps, because people are, are trapping these things. Mm -hmm. uh, um, our, uh, armadillos, I haven't seen very many armadillos that will actually go into a trap. Uh, the way I understand, they're a burrowing animal, and they're constantly going along the ground digging and digging. And if they come across like a hard surface, they'll kind of back up and go around it. So that's kind of a factor in why they don't, or why we don't see a lot of armadillos going in traps. Because they'll dig along, they'll go into this trap, and hey, this, this is not cool here. I hit something that's hard, just back up and go another direction. 
but we do see a lot of raccoons being trapped, a lot of possums being trapped. Groundhogs are another big thing. Once your gardens get going, mm -hmm. groundhogs are vegetarians and they will oh, attack yeah. your tomato mm -hmm. garden in no time. Yeah, they get huge. Oh, big, <laughs> big. So we see a lot of wildlife during the spring and summer months. Uh, po uh, raccoons will go into uh, trash cans, mm -hmm. uh, especially your businesses, your fast food places. They love the greasy hamburgers. Well, we do so, too. So, <laughs> they're hey. great. So, we're always rescuing or relocating wild animals. And that's another thing. People go, well, what are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to kill this animal? Yeah. We relocate. That's what we do. We relocate these animals. We have designated spots uh, around the area set up by the Department of Conservation. And we'll take these animals and we'll relocate them, uh, put them out into a wooded area. Sometimes now we'll come across a raccoon, and, and, and uh, we also get a lot of calls on distemper. Raccoons, they, people call and go, hey, there's this raccoon out here in the middle of the road, and he's going around in circles, and he's falling over. That's a very, very good indication of distemper or, and or rabies. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You can't. There's, there really is no difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, we cannot, uh, we can't allow those sick animals to, to remain. Mm -hmm. It's a public safety concern because the little kids, of course, they're out of school and they're in playgrounds. Mm -hmm. Now you go and pick up an infected raccoon or an infected skunk or, and you're going to have some problems. Well, you know? it's not, not only just that, they can spread it around to each other. Sure and, they can. You know, sure that's, can. I know that's one of the reasons why you know, some people hate hunting. But hunting is, is important, especially when it comes with deer. You, you get too many deer in one population, the deer will get sick. Right, And exactly. then the whole population will get sick, and they'll just end up dying mm -hmm. anyways. Sure. So by taking care of the, the rabid um, raccoons, raccoons or whatnot, whatever. The, the test, you can help prevent the spread. The spread of disease, yeah. exactly. And we have the acorn trail, which my daughter and I, we, we take a walk from our mm. house to Green Acres. We, every so often, we'll see an animal walk by. Now, obviously, it's not rabies, like mm -hmm. God. But, right. you know, you're going to see kids walking now with their parents. And it, it's, it's a great trail, but you don't want to get attacked. Exactly, sure. You know, but I say 98% of the wildlife we pick up is actually relocated. Mm -hmm. And we're going to throw some snakes in there, too. We get yeah. a lot of snake calls. See, we got all kinds of, we do everything. We pick up the snakes, the, the copperheads, the black snakes, oh. and the, uh, the garter snakes are coming out in numbers, great numbers now. We've already had calls for garter snakes. Yeah. So the increase in wildlife calls definitely picks up. Uh, we'll, take in, we'll take in 150, 200 animals, 300 animals wildlife a year. So, which isn't a great number, but it is a lot when you have two officers, three officers yeah. who are working, you know. <laughs> you know, in addition to that, um, so my notes here, we get a lot of calls for dogs running at large. Mm -hmm. You get people on vacation, you get people in parks and stuff, and they like to have their dogs with them. We get a lot of calls, and that's where most of our dogs come from in this shelter, is we go out and pick them up because they're running loose. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we go back to our initial conversation. If it has a tag, we'll get, back, we'll get it back home to you. If it doesn't have a tag, five days it belongs to us, and we'll find it a new home. So we get a lot of dogs running at large calls. We also get a significant number of, of barking complaints, uh, dog barking complaints. Um, kids are out of school. Uh, people are going in and out, so, of course, dogs are going to want to bark. Mm -hmm. um, they don't want to be stuck in the house or out there in the yard. They want to be out with everybody. So we get a lot of barking calls. And then your general animal complaints. Uh, they might include stray cats or abandoned animals. Or And another thing I kind of want to touch on in the springtime, you see a lot of newborn animals. Yes. Uh, your squirrels, your raccoons, mm -hmm. your birds and things. What I'd like to put out there is when you when people see these, we ask that you please just leave them alone. Baby rabbits are another thing. But they're so cute. They're so cute. And I... the first indication, hey, I'm going to pick this up. It's a baby. And a lot of your wildlife and your animals out there, once you get that human scent yep. on them, the mother's going to disown them. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you the numbers of baby birds uh, that we've had brought in here. Um, people bring them in in boxes. Hey, it, it, the mom kicked it out of the nest. Well, they kicked it out of the nest for a reason because it's in it's in bird training, I guess, if you would. They're trying to teach it how to fly. 
but people will go over and pick them up and put them in boxes and bring them to us and oh. the little baby rabbits and stuff just leave them where you see them yeah. i mean just enjoy them yeah. don't pick them up exactly course. don't pick them up and bring them to us we have no place we <laughs> cannot deal with baby rabbits uh baby birds things like that we used to have a uh, a wildlife rescue organization that we dealt with whenever we had baby animals brought in to us baby raccoons things like that we'd call this rescue group and they'd come in and get it from us in the last couple of years this is disbanded it's no longer uh, uh, a legitimate group so I mean we have no place to go with these baby animals so you just gotta leave them alone <laughs> yeah make sure that you uh, you know nature needs to take its course exactly you know right. you, you can't stop a hurricane you can't stop a tornado so let nature take its course with these little animals right. if if there's baby birds they made you their nice little home in your gutter leave them alone not going to take very long for them to grow up and leave and once the birds grow up and leave then you can take down the nest but sure sure yeah i mean, I, I like seeing the nest in the tree i do yeah, there, there's uh, this one little nest outside of um, where uh -oh. i take my break what did i just do Oh, we're oh. still going. Okay. <laughs> Technical, difficulty. Technical difficulty for me. <laughs> but there's this little nest um, outside of Shadowwood that, you know, I go on my breaks. Go oh, it's in the backyard. Oh, in back. And it's a really cute nest, so I was trying to peek in to see if I can see anything, but it's an empty nest, and it's just so pretty. I just left it alone. It, it really is. I mean, I, I'm with being so tall, I'm able to see it. It's, yeah, he it's, was able it's to still, like, right around my neck back. area, so I'm like, oh, yeah, there's nothing in there. But it's, it's quite cool and empty. Right. Sure. Yeah, just leave them alone. It's but animal control does a lot. And now that the warmer weather is coming up, we're going to see a business just increase, escalate. Mm. We're going to see a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, um, anything else? Uh, I think that's just about covers it, unless you have some questions. And Oh, uh, no, it was very informative. I usually just sit here and just listen to you most of the time. Um I learned a lot. I always learn a lot. Um, yeah, the picture I will I will actually paint for everybody is um, oh, just well, lock the door. Sorry, we gotta stop for a second there. <laughs> um, but the one thing I have to paint the picture is we're sitting here and John Redshaw really did his homework. You can tell. You really did. I mean, he has two pages. He's ready for this. He's that was dedicated to get these animals saved and rescued and, and adopted out. Uh, we, we, we spoke a couple times over the last uh, month about this episode. You really did your homework. Got to sure. give you that one. Well, I try. I try. <laughs> so, you know, it is, it is great. And as you can tell, I turned the, the actual phone this way so that you didn't have to see the clock. That was the first <laughs> thing. Remember we the first yeah, episode? Yeah. That was there great. Um, all right, well, we're going to actually conclude episode 20 on this, and then we're going to go and we're going to do the next portion of it. But we're going to cut on this one and this one. Um, any last things you want to say? If anybody ever has any need for animal control, we ask that you to just please call us. Uh, I'm going to throw in real quick, we do get a lot of complaints that uh, during business hours we're not here, the door is locked, uh, we don't answer our phones. Uh, reiterate, there's only three officers uh, two full-time and there's one part-time due to budget constraints. Mm -hmm. So we're out there constantly, six days a week, answering calls. Uh, we might get 20, 25, 30 calls a day, which definitely keeps us busy. Uh, public safety is number one priority. Uh, we, we have two different businesses here. Uh, number one, we're basically animal law enforcement through our city police department. We'll go out and write tickets, do animal cruelty investigations, bite investigations, neglect invest, all kinds of things like that, which requires us to be out there on the road, responding to calls, helping the public, keeping the public safe. If you've got a, a vicious dog running loose in your neighborhood and you've got children at the park, we have to go. Uh, the shelter, the Rolla Animal Shelter, is part of the city. It's owned by the city of Rolla, but a lot of our guidelines come to us from the Department of Agriculture. We have inspections once or twice a year. They come down. That's how we get our operating license. We're governed by them. So, uh, I mean, I don't want nobody to get us wrong. The animals are a priority um, through the animal shelter, but also public safety is the number one, the number one uh, 
priority, right? We have to go. So if we're not here, you can't get a hold of us, just please keep trying. You leave a message, we will get back to you just as soon as we can. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to reference really quickly. Um, last week, I think it was, you had um, a dog scared on 44. Interstate 44, that's I, right. I was, well, yes. I was watching on that. I mean, how many officers did that take? Two. Okay, so there, that's two out of your three that had exactly. to be Exactly. Well, there was only two of us here that day. Ooh. And, you know, this was work in conjunction with the Rolla Police Department mm -hmm. and the... Uh, uh, the Missouri Highway Patrol. Mm -hmm. They basically stopped or slowed down traffic, which could enable us to get out there and safely rescue the dog uh, in the middle, middle of I-44 with trucks going by 60 miles an hour. But good news, the dog come in here, the dog was held for five days, mm -hmm. and we named it Highway. <laughs> so, And that dog was adopted yesterday to a wonderful, wonderful oh, family. Awesome. So it is no longer here, it went home. Oh, that's awesome. I, you know, I always like to touch on the, the highlights because everybody always likes to talk about all the, the downs. You gotta close with a highlight, and that that was a great story. If, if you don't know the story, go onto Facebook, look at Rolla Animal Shelters page. You'll see a big picture of an overpass and dog right there. You, you can barely could see him. Little teeny tiny dog. It was like looking at Waldo. Where, where's the dog? Where's the dog? I, I I took me a couple minutes to find the dog, but I was really amazed by that story. I had to sure. remember that. Yeah. All right. It's it's a it's a very good note. It's a very positive story, and and I'm sure there's people out there going, well, so what? It's a dog. You put a leash on the dog, and you put it in the truck. Wow, anybody could do that. Remember, you're in the middle of I-44. You had one lane of traffic just simply slow down. Mm -hmm. This could have turned bad very very quickly. Had the dog jumped over on the westbound mm -hmm. side. We would have had some major issues because what's the first indication if a dog runs out in front of you? Hit your brakes. Step on the brakes. Now you got this big truck behind you. You've got problems, okay? You're a hood ornament. Exactly. So we was kind of concerned about that, but we did manage to <coughs> safely put a leash on it. But you're still out there in the middle of the eastbound lanes mm -hmm. tangling with this dog. The dog was, it's a nice dog, but he was scared to yep. death. So you still got a whole bunch of cars coming down. They're just merely slowed down, and we only had exactly on two or three minutes to do what we had to do. And I'm sure it, it would probably took in your mind it was like oh, an hour. An hour. Yeah. yeah I believe the dog it. laid down in the middle of the highway, so uh -huh. we had to basically pick the dog up. And the dog is scared, so there's a safety concern because if you pick a scared dog up, it's going to bite you. Yes. So we had to do this right. We had to do this professionally, and it turned out great. Great, great end to this episode. I, I, I just had to mention that. I was thinking about that as this was going on. All right, do you have anything you want to add? I just want to say thank you for to you and all your colleagues that you have that we are so lucky to have our safe streets, our, you know, the disease not spraying around for what you guys do. Um, a lot of people don't truly appreciate what animal control has done for their community. Yeah. So take the time, find out. You'll be shocked. And it Thank is you. it is animal. <coughs> I never can get the whole day. National so. Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week. Thank you. <laughs> you I, I, you I have, have the, the animal control officer saying it. I'm sorry. You know, I uh, I, I have to write it down. It's it's just that. Hey, way. that's all right. That's I, all I right. write down most of my stuff. All right. Well, I'm Chris Green. It's been a great time here. Have a puptastic week. And I'm Sarah Green, making sure everybody knows life is short. Play with your pup. Thanks, everybody. And stay tuned for our next episode. It will be a little bit of uh, just going on what goes on here. Thanks, everybody. Bye.